Hello, my name is Noel Kingsbury, and with my colleague Annie Gelfoyle, I run Garden Masterclass. Now, Annie and I started Garden Masterclass uh, six years ago to put on live educational events uh, in the British Isles. Uh, but with um, COVID, uh, the lockdown, in April 2020, uh, we started doing a public service broadcast. Uh, and then we've settled down to running both live events, uh, but also with a big online content. So we do this Thursday Garden Chat once a week on a Thursday evening, six o'clock um, Western European time. And those recordings then go up on to uh, YouTube. Now, we also do webinars. We have a webinar season that runs through from September to May. We get leading experts globally uh, from the garden and landscape world to talk about their specialism. And of course, that's an opportunity uh, to ask them questions. Most of those webinars are recorded and are then available uh, through Vimeo from our website. Uh, we also put on courses. Uh, there's a course on naturalistic planting design, for example, which I do with uh, Professor Nigel Dunnett of the University of Sheffield in, in Northern England. Uh, and uh, we sometimes get involved in organizing conferences. Uh, we do all sorts of things that are aimed at encouraging quality planting, quality gardening, uh, knowledge about plants and botany, and plant science, and uh, we hope you'll you'll join us. Uh, we have a membership scheme which gives you discounts on our webinars and live events and various other goodies. Uh, and but also you can just sign up for our monthly email newsletter uh, to keep in touch with what we're doing. We believe, and we've been told by many people, that what we do is unique. It's unique in the range and quality of people we talk to and our global reach and our diversity. Uh, so I uh, hope you enjoy this particular episode and uh, do come back for more. To introduce our speakers this evening, over to you, Annie. Thank you. Thanks, Noel. And also just to point out, we do have a student membership as well, which which is for students and apprentices and people on training schemes, um, which is a really good deal. Um, and you just need to email us um, and join up as an online member. And then you get a 50 percent discount on any events that we do, which is which is a really um, which makes a big difference. So if you know if you know of any students, horticultural students or um, trainee apprentices, gardeners, please do um, tell them about it because it's it's really good so yes anyway so um i'm really really um excited uh we have two wonderful guests tonight from the glass house in cranbrook in kent and i whizzed past not quite past the, the glass house today but frustratingly um from sissinghurst i skirted around um cranbrook which is a very beautiful part of kent so welcome carly hamilton stove and maria love and i have to say maria your surname is perfect <laughs> can we can we swap <laughs> but thank you very much for joining us um and carly is is um in in a very very posh hotel um this evening um going to give out an award which is very exciting so thank you very much for but sparing the time that's uh, that's um yeah a lot a lot on your plate so um i've prepared a screen i've prepared a rolling screen so i'm going to go into screen share and and then we can talk and chat um with that running in the background because there's some great images so i'm going to get that going um let's start hopefully no it's not going to let me do it now. It let me do it earlier on. Oh, this is annoying. Oh, no. Right. Okay, let's try. Um, this is very annoying. Screen share. Hmm. It's not letting me screen share. Um, let's see what's happening. You might have to start talking, chaps. So, and I'll, okay. be, I'll fiddle away I'm, with with screen share. Well, well. I'm so happy to start talking. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having us. I'm so excited to be here with you. It's um, it's a real honor. Um, I guess I'll just talk a little bit about what the glass house is to begin with, and give a bit of background. Um, 
So we are a social enterprise. We are about three years old and we started in um, the HMP East Sutton Park in Kent um, just before lockdown. We basically um, had noticed in HMP East Sutton Park that there, um, my one of my um, co-founders had noticed that there were some glass houses that were not really in use. And she thought it would be wonderful to be able to address some of the issues that were happening within the prison and to um, also um, kind of use the facilities that they had in place. And so we started doing research on what our options were. And we basically um, decided that um, the, the, this kind of house plant trend and the plant trend for people to have lots of house plant was a really great thing for us to try and capitalize on so that we could um, eventually become self-sustaining as one of our objectives. Um, what we were trying to address was um, the high rates of reoffending amongst women in prison coming out and the lack of housing and employment for them when they left prison. Um, so, um, and Maria, can, my colleague Maria, who's our head of social impact, can talk more about that. So we put in, uh, we did a lot of research on the um, kind of plant installation and maintenance world and house plant growing and nurturing. And we put a proposal towards to the MOJ and they love the idea immediately. They love the, um, they have a new futures network, which is really focused on applying business to some of the needs in prison. And they love the idea. So we were in by February, 2020. And unfortunately after February, 2020 in March, um, we had a little epidemic and, and we ended up not really being able to start the program as we'd hoped. So our hope was to immediately go into installing and uh, maintaining plants in corporate, the corporate environment. So instead of doing that, we immediately started doing um, kind of corporate gifting. And we went to the clients that we'd been talking to and we started um, within prison, we started with the same cohort that we'd lined up and we had a really good work, uh, group of women that were working with us. And we started the horticultural training with them. They loved it. And it meant that they weren't stuck in their prison rooms or cells. They could come out, they could work in the glass houses. And because the glass houses were considered to be outside, we were able to come in and work in, um, in those glass houses as well with them all the way through COVID, which was actually a real gift, I think, for everyone involved to get to keep the program going and to really kick it off. It gave us a chance to really like bet into the prison environment, learn a lot about working within that environment, about working with the women in prison, and also um, kind of kick off our program and, and kind of hone the horticultural training to be perfect for what we needed. So by the time that lockdown lifted, we started um, kind of going back to our kind of original plan of doing the installation and maintenance in the corporate environment. And that is really the bread and butter of what we do now. I say that Maria says that the um, plants are our side hustle and that the women are our main focus, which is actually true because um, the whole point of the glass house is to really cut reoffending and to help women um, resettle back into society successfully. Um, and we have a really big resettlement um, program that Maria runs that starts from the first day they join us and we look at all the aspects they need to have in place to make sure they're successful at resettling into um, back in their world. Um, so, and we support that. And um, our clients to date have grown. We've been had amazing um, corporate clients as well as private clients. We sell pl our kind of smaller plants through our web shop and through our actual shop in Cranbrook. And we're planning to open one in London this year. We also um, sell to our corporate clients through our corporate gifting, which is still massive. During COVID, we must have sent thousands of plants out to Ernst & Young employees and Lockton Insurance employees and clients and partners. Everyone um, really loved the idea of sending someone a plant during COVID to kind of keep them healthy and keep them happy because plants do make people happy. Um, we're very focused on those biophilic principles of keeping people near nature um, and now our clients especially um, we do we have quite a lot of um, installation and maintenance clients where we have actually installed large office plants and where our women go and maintain them every uh, month they go twice a month to check on them and make sure they stay healthy um, we have PwC uh, we have Seahor Bank we have MFS investments um, the conduit which is a private club um, 
uh, Pearson is our newest client. So we're really, we are kind of, we, but we have a lot of smaller clients as well. Names people wouldn't recognize. We do, we kind of have a bespoke service and we can do anything from 10 to thousands of plants. And um, the women um, that we train are very well trained. They have a horticultural qualification by the time, um, usually by the time they finish and they are probably trained much higher than industry standards generally. So, and they're very invested in the health of the plant. So we generally find that our service is um, kind of well beyond the industry standard. And, and Carly, um, Rachel was just asking, uh, what's your position um, in the business? And were you Sorry. working? Yeah, were you working in the prison sector before um, you started this, or not? So I am one of the co-founders. Mm -hmm. I am now managing director, um, and I basically was not working. I had very no, actually mm -hmm. zero, not not even very little. I had very, zero experience in the UK prison sector. I'd done a little bit of volunteer work. I'm American, and I'd done some work there, and I had an interest. Um, my other co-founder had been um, doing quite a lot of support and research in the prison sector, so she knew a lot more about it. But really, Maria Love, our head of social impact, is has um, years and years, she's very young, but years of, <laughs> um, of experience, and she really has been invaluable, and we couldn't be where we are without her. She really um, manages the prison relationship and um, that part of the work we do. Yeah, and where you're located, which is Cranbrook in Kent, and for people who are viewing or listening from, from far away, it's very close to Sissinghurst and Great Dixter, so that will give you an idea of where it's located. So um, are there, are you working primarily with one prison or a, a, a number of prisons? And, and you know, is, is the location very specific to, you know, how, does it work well with that um, you, mind? Are we, we are in an amazing location. The prison is in Sutton Valence, which is really close to Maidstone, and it's close to where I live, which is why it originally and and where we all live so that's why it started but we our objective we have very um uh, kind of we have high objectives for the next five to ten years is to be in every women's prison in the uk mm -hmm. and we're in two in surrey as well send mm -hmm. and downview uh, maria has started doing training and working with the women there and we hope that once their rattle programs pick up they'll be coming out with us as well mm -hmm. and then um probably the next one will be bronze filled we've been speaking with them and then we really want to get up kind of because there's some really um interesting kind of prisons and organizations in um, Man around manchester and leeds that we hope to target in the next five years and is what you're doing a, a sort of new ground is this is this is this a, a new initiative um for, for somebody for an outside company to come in and, and take this on rather than be, it be in-house training yeah, yeah yeah it's a really different way of um, looking at rehabilitation and resettlement support because um so we are um the highest level of community interest company which means we are not for profit all of the money that we make goes back into our kind of training and employment programs mm -hmm. um a CIC doesn't have to be not for profit. There are a lot of different options. So, but I think that the exciting thing is that we've looked at an industry that needs employees. It, it is trending. It's really growing. Mm -hmm. um, it has a lot of potential to make money because corporates with money want it. Mm -hmm. And we've kind of taken that and we put it in a place where people need work and people mm -hmm. need training. And those people are kind of, it kind of just matches up really well with the, mm -hmm. with what's going on. And, and I think that that's really what um, is exciting about seeing an industry actually work and seeing the women come out who we've been working with and they're really well trained and a lot of them won't necessarily go into the same type of work, but they still have incredible training mm -hmm. um, and employment um, references mm -hmm. and they have some money they've saved so they can go out and do that. So. Um, and their self-esteem has been boosted because of what they're doing. Massive. Yeah. That's yeah. a massive part of what we do. Yeah, and and you're focusing on indoor plants, house plants. Um, is 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 that is that sort of because you see that as being uh, has has a sort of a wider niche with the corporate world, or or you know, is is there plans to go into sort of mainstream gardening as well, or or are you keeping it simple at the moment? Well, I say simple, but you know, what focused really at the moment. So in terms of planning, so at the moment, we do actually do quite a lot of outdoor gardens as well. We call them mm -hmm. kind of living spaces. So right. we wouldn't do a massive, you know, acres of garden, but like certainly for our clients, we do a lot of roof gardens and terraces, mm -hmm. places where people kind of are are spending time regularly. Yeah. And um, and we really, and the women love doing that. So mm -hmm. outdoor gardening is absolutely a, a string to our bow and something that we'd like to grow even more. 
the reason that we chose and the reason we're really going to focus on the indoor house plant and the installation and maintenance work is because of the business and the, the kind of commercial opportunity there right for right. women yeah. yeah yeah and and it said you you said that you're you you take over disused glass houses that uh, does every prison have a, you know a, a, a horticultural unit that is sort of run down or are some of them you know are you creating uh horticultural units and some are they you know are they all different so uh, you know how, how does that work so actually it's a good question because every prison is a little different a lot of prisons do have glass houses and some mm -hmm. are in use and and actually at hmpe sutton park just to be clear they have they do use what some of the, the glass houses for their own use because they have really lovely gardens there and they work with some of the women to grow vegetables and to try and give the kitchen some so they do some really great work in the garden there too but they have five glass houses and they don't wow. they really don't keep them busy all year long at all right and so there were two that were available to us to use easily that we're working really well. We actually have found it very expensive to be in those glasses houses at the moment. So we've moved our growing facility out off the prison grounds of HMP Sim Park. But um, again, we'll still continue to work in the prison. We still do training there. And we mm -hmm. also at SEND, we work in their glass houses and do training there as well. And they have glass houses and Downview has glass houses. Um, so most prisons, because of the agriculture history of the prison kind of system, mm -hmm. will have glass houses. Bronzefield, which is a newer prison, and it is the largest women prison in Europe. We've been talking to them for a while. They do not have any glass house and they have very little horticultural garden facility. And right. so we really find that well, that's a priority for us to kind of try and address that because we think there's potential there to help a lot of women. You know, mental and physical wellness of horticulture is also a lot of what we do. So really get in there and try to give them that opportunity as well as the training and employment opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, so we are hoping to find some funding and mm -hmm. we've thought about a lot of different ideas, including potentially, um, you know, working with the RHS or other people to try to get a glass house to install at Bronzefield so that we can start working there. Right. And what's the most challenging part of what you do? I mean, you know, not necessarily just what you do, but what, what as the company, I mean, what, what is the most difficult part of the role? Or are there other areas, you know, that a few areas that is, you know, what, what are your challenges? Maria, do you want to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess um, one of the biggest challenges we have is, is the fact that we're working with pris the prison service and there are obviously a lot of rules and regulations around mm. the women that we're working with and um, that can be tricky and that's a bit of a juggling act and I think the the work changes so quickly and mm. like the, the needs of the installations that we've got change and so getting those changes through to be approved by the prison service can sometimes um, be daunting but we've built up some really great relationships with the prisons that um, we work with regularly and so I feel like we're finding our groove but it's definitely been a learning curve. <laughs> so is it is it the kind of the red tape really of of just you know that all of those rules that you know you have to obviously you have to abide um to to their rules <laughs> but um you know it, are they quite onerous i mean before you before you start at a new prison are there quite a lot of things that you have to um you know hurdles that you have to jump and things that you have to agree and um, i think most prisons kind of operate in similar ways um mm -hmm. with um east sutton park it's a category d open prison mm -hmm. so there's less red tape to get through mm -hmm. um as the, the other prisons are secure prisons so it's slightly different and what you can take in um is is always there's always issues there so yeah. if we're trying to deliver a workshop in the prison there are obviously things that we're not allowed to take in with us mm. um and you you just learn to juggle that and yeah. work around it um we're not necessarily allowed to take scissors with us yeah, so yeah. they can be handy yeah, um, exactly. but, yeah. yeah but you i don't know i think we've adapted pretty well um mm. to the to the restrictions but i think also 
um, we now kind of factor that in. And we're really fortunate that um, a number of our women that have gone through the program with us whilst they were in custody have now been released and are still employed by us. Mm -hmm. So that is really helpful if we need um, somebody to go and check on one of our installations urgently. We won't necessarily be able to get that through the prison, mm -hmm. but our team are really dedicated to making sure that the installations we have remain healthy and beautiful and mm -hmm. yeah everyone works really hard at it yeah do, do you feel that you have uh what you call political support i mean that, that's a way of well approaching an, an individual prison but if that's within the context of i was thinking of the home office um i mean have you had contacts at a sort of higher level who are sort of giving you a green light or encouraging you or is it actually are you finding it a bit more you know problematic at that sort of level uh, no, I mean, the New Futures Network are who, um, sort of at the, at the Ministry of Justice, are who we kind of work closest right. with. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they are incredibly supportive. Oh, that's and, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. so that's... Yeah. Think, Probably much better than the Home Office where it ever would have been, you know. Mm -hmm. sort of, <laughs> I don't... <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Um, <laughs> okay, yes. Um, um, and could you just describe the sort of, the, the, you know, when you go into prison, I mean, presumably that you're, you're sort of repeating some workshops and that well, what, what's, where do you start from? What's the starting point of the workshops and the training and what, what sort of, um, you know, um, things do you cover in, in, in the training? Well, it starts at a really, really basic level um, mm -hmm. because what we're trying to do is open the women's um, like opportunities to them and broaden mm -hmm. the horizons. I think a lot of them are not aware of this um, area of work, especially mm. for women. Mm. And they might have seen installations in premises, but not really recognised what goes on behind the scenes. Mm. So, um, we go and we talk to them about employment opportunities and what that looks like. And we start off really basic with um, one of our plants, um, the Chinese money plant that we started with. Mm -hmm. And we show them how, um, how it grows, how it propagates. Um, we also show them how to repot the plant and then they're all they're able to take away their own house plant to care for and nurture from their rooms mm -hmm. and it is a real basic level but it gives people an opportunity to understand the benefits of working with plants and um find out a bit more and and that's actually been um the way that we've recruited our current cohort was um I think the majority of our current cohort came from workshops um who they attended um mm -hmm. i mean we have women uh, it sounds it it sounds um funny like in this in this place but women walked in and saw all these plants that we set up in this workshop and burst into tears because they hadn't seen indoor plants in so long and it was really emotional for them and yeah. and i feel we took a lot of our plants in and we took various plants. We took house plants, we took examples of installation plants just to give them a real feel for the different um, mm. the different areas of work um, that we provide. And mm. it was really overwhelming for them, which um, took me by surprise. For sure. oh, it's, yeah. it's a really interesting response because uh, last mm. week we were, had a very interesting interview with, a, with an academic who talks about plant blindness, the fact that so many people don't really almost sea plants plants are just a kind of green blur in the background and that is if, if, if a lot of people are said very difficult to get through to get them to appreciate that there are different kinds of plants and that plants actually behave and react and 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 uh you know have, have needs etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's rather wonderful to hear that actually that there was this emotional response but i was wondering how you whether you 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 sort of come up against that barrier with the very very early stages um, I think we, we've definitely seen it in some of our installations. Yeah. I mean, with our women, they're so used to grey. They're, they're so yeah. used to a grey, sterile environment that they they notice it immediately and they're so overwhelmed and grateful for the opportunity. Um, it, it, it gets a bit awkward at times when um, we're working with them because, you know, they're often just, thank you so much. And we're like, yeah, it's okay. Let's 
let's get on <laughs> because they are worth it they yeah. are worthwhile investing in and I think it's really great for them mm. to work in an environment where they feel that and they feel heard and they mm. feel part of something because mm. certainly our project um, wants to involve every single woman that we work with and give them a, an opportunity to impact the business and um, share their ideas and we've definitely we've started um, selling plants that our women have decided that they thought would be a really good move for us to sell and it's, mm -hmm. it's really great for them to see when people order them and they're like mm -hmm. oh I did the right thing that was a really great idea mm -hmm. and put them through that I think we've definitely um, seen it some installations I think um, and I've certainly seen it in offices I've worked at in the past where there's plants that look really sad all around and you don't really notice it because you're so focused yeah. on what you're doing but with our clients on the whole the response has been that it's made such a difference to their team's um well-being and desire to be in the office I think um sort of post-covid there was real um issues and problems with getting people back into the office back into work and mm. it's it's really been beneficial to them when they're coming back in to see their spaces um, with beautiful green plants and and know that they're making a difference to the women that we're working with because yeah. it makes such a difference to them to be accepted in that way. And is there any uh, similar initiatives running in men's prisons, for example, other than the sort of the horticulture that happens within the prison? So is, is there a similar organisation to, to yourselves going into men's prisons and doing anything like this? There's definitely um, like gardens teams across um, all the prisons. I'm not sure if Callie has got any um, knowledge of other um, yeah, opportunities in male prisons. We did look in some male prisons when we um, kind of after about a year of us starting mm -hmm. to see if we felt it was a wise direction to go in and um, certainly for us at the moment what became clear is that there are lots of opportunities um, for male prisoners and, and far fewer for women. Really? Mm -hmm. um, not necessarily in this field though um, but sort of like across the board and so we felt like at the moment it was wise to concentrate on the female estate. Mm -hmm. but, um, if Callie is she? Yeah Callie's yeah, there. Um, so there. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I'm here. Um, yeah. yeah, so yeah, we 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 definitely started in women's prisons because it was close by and it was what we had seen. And we have had a lot of men's prisons approach us and ask us about the potential to have a program in the men's prison. We visited some, Marie and I and, and my other founder have been have visited them. And we see the potential, certainly. Mm -hmm. But um I think you know, uh, there is, as Maria said, a lot more opportunity in those prisons because there are so many more men in prison. There are a lot mm -hmm. more programs for them. Mm -hmm. So we really thought rather than kind of kind of spread ourselves too widely, we really wanted to focus on the women's estate and and make sure that that we're we're giving what we're do we're doing for them. Mm -hmm. And and because the work that we do with houseplants, installing mm. and maintaining houseplants, it sure certainly is good for men as well. But it's especially good for women because it's uh, it's a very um, supportive environment. It's very gentle. It's very um, you know they can they can work in quite nice environments. It pay, it pays well. It, uh -huh. There's a lot of opportunity there. So we thought it really applied well to this audience actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and at your base in Cranbrook, I mean, you've you've got a shop, a, a, a sort of shop. yeah. So you're you're selling plants anyway. I mean, you you know you so you have a sort of a retail outlet. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, to that we, we did that because we learned quite quickly when we started working in the prison that the women that had Roddle, which is um, day release to go work, mm -hmm. they really wanted to get out. They wanted to start feeling like, you know, they were going to be back in society soon. And the benefits of that are massive of them getting out in that last kind of year or so that they're in prison, having an opportunity to start getting back in society see what it's like prove to themselves that not everyone's staring at them that they're yeah. not everyone's yeah. judging them and so we we decided quite quickly in the process that we needed to have a, a kind of consumer focus place oh. where they could have could interact with with the community and and really get back into that life and we're hoping to kind of actually 
roll that out as we roll out in other prisons to roll out other shops and, and offices where we can have they can have that opportunity. Oh right. So so the business started first and the shop came second rather than yeah. Oh right, okay. I, I just naturally assumed it was it was the other way around, but that's really, really interesting. So yeah, yeah. gosh, that's amazing. Um and so um well you said you're working mainly in the southeast but you are you are hoping to branch out into other prisons and further north absolutely i mean right yeah. now we service for for we can deliver plants anywhere in the uk so people mm -hmm. can go on our website and order plants so we can deliver anywhere in the uk um but for installation and maintenance we focus on london and kind of the southeast mm -hmm. maybe the southwest a bit now because we as we have women leave who we train and we have relationships with and maria uh, manages our kind of alumni network so we yeah. stay in touch with everyone we right. make sure we know what they're doing we make sure we um, give them regular updates and that we kind of give them a little bit of um, support when they need it mm -hmm. um, christmas and special holidays we try to remember just so that they can feel like the support doesn't stop when they leave prison that's kind of an important part of what we do yeah and um so we have women that have left that have moved farther away than where we have work available normally but because we know where they are and we know what their experience is and their ability is we have potential to pay, potentially use them as we as we grow as right well. right yeah and so, so how many of you are there running the running the show i mean how many of you are behind the scenes there are, um, we've hired a really last, um, earlier this year, we hired our horticultural specialist from, she was from the National Trust. She's great. She's mm -hmm. full time. And then, um, I think I'd say six, I'm trying to think. And then we have a couple, we have a volunteer as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, a horticultural volunteer who comes and helps quite a lot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're quite, well, you are essentially quite a small team then. Yeah. Really? Yeah running this and, but we okay, yeah. I say six sorry but yeah but we hire that includes everyone who's never been in prison sorry yeah <laughs> so yeah no, that's what I hire. meant it's like, yeah you you guys as the, as the core yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but we have but we have hired um three women who are outside the who have finished our program and left prison and mm -hmm. they all work part-time but we have three of them working for us as well right yeah yeah Thank and you. so yeah Oh no! Uh, yes, I was going to say, uh, working with plants, uh, gardening is, is it is a continual process of discovery. You know, you're always learning something, uh, and uh, particularly rewarding as sort of learning about things that you know you didn't read in the book or on the website or whatever. And uh, we've had one question about whether you know the women you work with have, have made their own discoveries about about plants, particularly about aspects of their of their care. Something perhaps that's surprised you um the so the the with something maria might be better but about the women that's something about the women that has surprised us no no, no about the no, okay. women making discoveries about 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 oh. plants about how to care for them yeah like, well them, yeah i think they're I see, all yeah sorry we never have them entirely exactly taped yeah. and understood no. well i think um i think what's interesting is so we've had you know people have a lot of preconceived notions about why women people are in prison or what they what people are like but we've had quite a lot of women come in who literally have had very little um you know exposure to nature or mm. to working with plants and what is amazing is is to watch i think so what has surprised me is how maybe at first they're very hesitant they get very nervous about like pinching out or doing these things that you know but then as they watching those women who in the past probably you know may not have finished gcse's or may not have had a lot of kind of education they really um take on what they're learning and they're really applying that to to a process that's you know that has such um interesting uh kind of outcomes so they mm -hmm. kind of start you see them kind of being very hesitant and then as they get more confident they really start to interact with the plants more and to be more confident in the way they do that um and and they end up kind of telling us what to do and i love that i love when they say oh no 
you can't, you know, they're doing their own research. They're doing their <laughs> own. They're asking questions of the horticulture special learn well beyond me or any, you know, Maria. And it's really great when they kind of take that on and all of a sudden they feel like the expert. They feel mm. like they can, they can mm -hmm. teach something. And it's yeah, really and that empowering. Has been, yeah, yeah. It's so yeah. empowering. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think also the thing about any, well, certainly with horticultural therapy is, is that you, you know, people are focusing, you're focusing on the plants. People are not focusing physically <clears throat> on each other you're focusing on something aren't you and yeah. i think you know and it's something that needs care and nurture and um and and, and you almost you know it, it doesn't if people don't want to talk very much or they don't want to talk about themselves there's there's something there that they can do and i'm sure that that must help enormously i think it really does and i think mm -hmm. in that environment especially where um, you get very little opportunity to care for something else mm, and you get mm. very little opportunity to um, feel needed or to feel useful mm -hmm. i think it that, those things actually all of it you, and, and such a beautiful human thing to see those things mean so much because they mm. do they really mm. do mm. and um you know i think maria's maria has a lot more interaction directly with the women who are in prison or, or just recently coming out but we definitely had one you know that that literally every day she comes in she's like she's so grateful thank um, you so much i love she loves being around the plants she yeah. you know and and it's and it, she says we went last week we went to a garden and we had like a plant hunt it was a, kind of had a lot of indoor plants we did a plant hunt where they could find some of the plants that we do grow and some that we may want to grow and um she said i've taken this day off my prison sentence it doesn't count as being in prison because this is this, you know she said it's just it's been so you know so yeah. empowering and, and yeah and, yeah 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 that's incredible so so how how do you how do you fund what you do then so is 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 running running the business is that pure not purely but is that through your retail outlet or, or do you get funding how does that work so our objective is to eventually be self-sustaining mm -hmm. and based on our business model we think that is highly possible because um as i said we have a lot of amazing corporate accounts mm -hmm. now and um so our our business kind of plan is we've got all a few different streams the main one is the installation and maintenance and mm -hmm. that's where large corporates or small corporates can get involved with what we do and they can hire us to come and install plants in their office and then so there's a, a cost to that and then there is a cost for us coming and maintaining those plants monthly and that cost is obviously ongoing mm -hmm. and it allows us to keep that employment and training program going so that is really the main part of where we make our money um, the corporate gifting is growing. Um, it was really good during COVID. It slowed down a bit, but it, we still do a lot of it, especially around the holidays. Um, so that's a really good stream as well and is, is supportive. The shop and the web shop are probably our weakest stream, but those are so important to the work we do with the women that they get to actually have those kind of um, touch points with the community. We really don't want to lose those. So those are kind of um, a yeah. loser, if you will. If you will. Sure, we hope sure. to grow those. Yeah. We really would love to grow the web shop and the, and the shop aspect. So that's yeah. kind of on our, the back of our minds. And then we also do, um, we do workshops. So the women, we can go to our corporate clients and do potting team building workshops and those are amazing we've had such good feedback so that's a small part a stream as well the women love doing that it like actually them teaching people in an office or in a in an environment to, to about compost about propagation they love it. it really builds up their confidence massively and they leave you can see them from the beginning to the end they leave just shining mm -hmm. and then we also do we've just started last year a holiday decorating service for our clients so we go in and put christmas trees in and decorate them and again these are things that our clients have asked of us and so we've added them to our to our product offering mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the christmas offering is just the women's favorite thing they love going in and like decorating <laughs> for christmas yeah. obviously um and you know we're very particular and we're very we you know i am kind of big on consistency and quality and so i kind of watch that and i make sure that whatever we do is really consistent and also you know design led and very good um quality so and the women kind of really respond to to that well and mm. they kind of deliver really well so those mm. anyway those are our kind of streams but 
we do have funding as well. So we do have grant funding um, and it's probably about 20% of our work. And we kind of consider that grant funding, it will be needed for a long time because of the resettlement work we do and because of the work Maria does. Mm -hmm. And we also, there are things we do for the women. We help them get driver's license if they want. We help them find legal aid. Um, Maria helps them with housing um, applications and with employment applications and with their CVs. And we help if they have child, you know, in care and they need to mm -hmm. access services around that, we help them mental and physical wellness kind of needs, you know. Mm -hmm. So there are these things that really aren't business, you know, a lot of businesses wouldn't be able to support. Yeah. yeah. And so we kind of do need that funding to support those those yeah. aspects. So you you are offering much more than you know, than it seems on face value, if you see what I mean. Mm. I mean, you know, it's a much bigger, much bigger deal. And Carly, you're from the States originally, and and um are there, are there sort of, you know, are you aware of schemes like this happening in the States? I know that Sue Stewart Smith meant, talked about prisons, women's prisons in the States, well, prisons actually, not just women's prisons in her book. Um, but that you, it's not that you've kind of, you know, there's a model that you're, no, no, it's just. Gosh, no, gosh, no. no. And you know what? I've, had, I've been contacted by um, one foundation in America that was interested in emulating it, but not that I know of. There is nothing. And I, I tell you what, I, it's, the system is a bit broken here it's really broken there <laughs> oh, really? so you know this this yeah. kind of thing if it could work in america would be amazing i imagine yeah. um but i'm worried, i'm here right now i've been here for 20 years i'm gonna work on this and then we'll get there so. yeah 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 and and the shops you were saying that the shops that you you'd like to have some more shops so are you seeing that as become like a franchise um maybe you, you know maybe. That you, you would be franchising the idea or you know people yeah. oh I don't know. I mean, there's a maybe that is a that is a possibility. I mean, I think um, that's you know we have some really great advisors um, who are helping us with mm -hmm. how to go because retail is a different a different animal. Yeah, and um, and it's not our specialty. So we're kind we're kind of hesitant on that. We really want to do it because we want it to be to work for the services we provide the women. And we see it as a potential, you know, way to make money, but it really is about, it's really like the home. It's really mm. like a, a mm. place for them to come mm. and work and feel safe and start to, to increase their, yeah. their confidence. And I guess, as you were saying, you, you, you'd like to know that everything is being done to a certain standard. And I guess that as soon as you start franchising things out, it may not necessarily be done the same way that Absolutely. you do. So, so it's keeping that control, isn't it? And, and it's such a, it's such a delicate thing, isn't it really? Um, that yeah to sort of just absolutely it, it's lovely to have world domination but you you need to know that it's being done properly <laughs> absolutely and we need a lot more maria's as well because you know that you know you can't do that on zoom you, yeah. to, you know to kind of really be there for the women so sure, sure. So. yeah 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 no that's that's amazing well i'm really sorry that i couldn't get the screen share to work and i know what the problem is because i've got a new system software on the machine and of course i have it's not allowing me to do it but noel is a tech 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 genius and so i'm sure for the recording he can drop the um the the powerpoint yeah, just make just make sure i get the presentation yeah yeah, yeah because yeah. and not only did you send me the most lovely images which i'm so sorry not to share and i really enjoyed putting it together but you also put some you gave me some quotes which i've dropped onto the slide some really lovely quotes from women that you've worked with and so um yeah i'm sorry that the, the people alive are not watching it but we will get that up so people can enjoy it and um yeah Definitely. Thank you. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I always try to, um, I hope you don't mind. <laughs> so I always try to kind of give a little bit of a call to action whenever I talk yeah. to people only because there is a lot people can do to support us. And, and, you know, we're, you know, we've been around three years, you know, we feel like we're, we're really on a, a growth track. And so we really want to keep that going and we want to help yeah. as many women in prison as possible. And so what we usually ask people, the ways people can help us if they want is they can go on our web shop and buy yep. a plant or yep. send a plant as a gift. They're beautiful plants. We wrap everything um, in uh, recycled and recyclable materials. It's hand packed and hand potted by the women. They do every aspect of every part of our business. So, mm -hmm. you know, every every time a plant goes, it really does represent a second chance for them because they're learning and they're kind of increasing their skills every time. Yeah. So that's a big one. They can certainly tell their employees or their their friends' employees about us. And if, if they need um, installations and maintenance, it would be wonderful to have more clients doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then they can... Um, 
just tell everyone this tell is everyone. just kind of follow word. us and yeah follow us and make yeah. sure because hopefully you know they and if you see someone on the street with a glass house t-shirt or one because we send them out in our say hi and say oh, oh, you, you oh right well uh, do you sell those lovely t-shirts as well or oh, well that's interesting i've never thought about that I, I thought one of the images that i used was somebody with a lovely t-shirt i thought i think i'd like one of those <laughs> oh well, we might just do that then you're so, on the list no they're really lovely they're really lovely okay. so no that, 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 that's great um, and you're absolutely right it would, be, it would be great for everybody just to spread the word um and 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 i'm sort of letting the cat out of the, the bag a little bit but carly myself maggie yeah. haynes and richard claxton all who've been on god masterclass before are getting together to organize a, a day on horticultural therapy uh in or, or, or all about horticultural therapy in october and we as garden masterclass are going to record record it as podcasts so it will be available as podcasts um but we've got quite a stellar lineup and nearer the time i'll, I'll let more people know about it it's going to be here in west sussex so it's um but you know like i say we're going to record it but we richard who's a gp who was on about two months ago possibly um yeah, yeah. is an extraordinary yeah. character and he's managed to get some amazing names and um people from parliament as well so it's 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 actually going to be a really good event so um i will keep you posted on that which is uh, which is exciting anyway well again apologies for not being able to get the the powerpoint to work but we will drop that in um and carly good luck with your with your prize giving tonight um i hope that goes really well it's very exciting in a very nice posh hotel and i hope you get a nice supper as well to go with it. <laughs> and maria thank you too for for supporting and joining in and um sharing sharing everything with us yeah, too. thank you really interesting really inspiring really inspiring. yeah it is it's mm -hmm. utterly inspiring and, and and i also should mention that i discovered you guys through the article in gardens illustrated oh that, yes uh, that paula mcwaters wrote and that's when i saw it and i thought aha yeah i want to know more about this so and you've had lots of wonderful publicity um so let's hope you get lots more wonderful publicity as well oh i hope so thank you thank yeah, you so yeah. much but um yeah but no it's been it's been a pleasure to talk to you and um have a really lovely evening <laughs> oh thank you thank you both it's really that's a pleasure right. talking to that's you that's okay and and we promise that we'll put up those gorgeous images on the recording <laughs> okay and thanks everybody for tuning in and um and we'll see you all soon okay thank you. thanks a lot bye bye okay. thank, thank you so much bye, bye.